Coming up on Mountain News at 6, the latest on a deadly crash that happened in Whitley County yesterday and a temporary replacement for District 3 Commissioner in Pike County has been named following Orville Blackburn's resignation. And enjoy the dry weather because the forecast turns wintry by Friday night. Those details coming up as Mountain News at 6 starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. Two people, including a 10-year-old, were killed in a Whitley County car crash Tuesday morning. The Whitley County coroner identified the 10-year-old as Drake Sutherland. Police identified the adult killed as Diana Alsip. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox is in the studio with more on what happened. Chandler? Police say they believe icy roads led to a crash in Whitley County. Officials say one car crossed the center line and hit another. This happened across from the Bee Creek Market on Bee Creek Road in Whitley County. The Whitley County Sheriff's Office responded to the scene. Sheriff Bill Elliott told WYMT they later called in Kentucky State Police to investigate. Corbin Independent Schools released a statement to WYMT about the incident, saying they believed one of their students was involved in the crash. They said, sadly, it is our understanding that the student has passed our thoughts and prayers are with the family and our school community. Police said another child was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. In studio, Chandler Walcox, WYMT Mountain News. Administrators with Corbin Independent Schools told us today they have grief counselors available for their students. One person is dead after a crash in Rockcastle County. State police say it happened late last night on South Wildness Road. 53-year-old uh, James McFerrin of Mount Vernon reportedly lost control of his SUV and veered into a tour bus. The bus was driven by 43-year-old Roger Miller of Lancaster. McFerrin was pronounced dead at the hospital by the Rockcastle County coroner. A McGoffin County man is facing child sexual exploitation charges. Detectives with the KSB's Electronic Crime Branch arrested 42-year-old Kent Sipkins. An investigation was started by KSB once they found Sipkins was uploading sexually explicit pictures of minors to an online social media account. Sipkins was taken to the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. A Tennessee teenager is behind bars after police say he reportedly shot a man in Middlesboro. Officers were dispatched to Middlesboro ARH Hospital for a gunshot victim last week. According to an arrest citation, a witness told police she and the victim were chased by a man in a Kia Soul after the victim asked her to take him to the hospital. The man in the Kia Soul was 19-year-old Bradley King. King was taken to the Bell County Detention Center. An Owen County woman is facing multiple charges after police say she threatened to kill a man. It happened last week when Hazard Police were called out to a home on Roll Street in Perry County. According to the arrest citation, the man told police the woman broke into the home with a pocket knife and threatened to kill him. The citation says 45-year-old Marsha Bowling also broke into another home. Bowling was taken to the Kentucky River Regional Jail. In Laurel County, a London man is behind bars after police say he was driving on a DUI suspended license. Deputies with the Sheriff's Office responded to a two-vehicle crash last night. During an investigation, officials determined 42-year-old Gary Selfridge was driving under the influence. Selfridge is facing multiple charges and was taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. Law enforcement from Knox and Laurel counties teamed up to bring nine people into custody following a drug bust. Jaza Engel, Joseph Holt, James Max Heron, Charles Fields, Eric Wilson, Josh Messer, Larry Tyler Hammonds, Jamerson Cannon, and Tyler Ross were all arrested for trafficking in illegal drugs. All nine were taken to the Knox County Detention Center. We are tracking some nice weather across the region as we go into your Wednesday evening. Check out this live image from across the region as the sun sets. Some beautiful pictures from Buffalo Mountain, also from I-64 and Moorhead, also from the London Corbin Airports. So be sure to enjoy this nice weather because we are tracking a few changes as we go into your Thursday, also on Friday. Those current temperatures, most of us 
in the middle to upper 50s up to 54 in Jackson. Also hazard 57 for Harlan 55 over in London at this hour. So we stay mild as we go into your evening up on first alert pinpoint Doppler. We are dry and more dry weather also on the way as we close out your Wednesday. Low temperatures are chilly in the middle to lower 30s as you wake up on your Thursday and most of us are dry on Thursday. Also mild highs top out in the upper 50s and possibly some lower 60s, but we are tracking an increase in that moisture by Friday, possibly a few more snowflakes as well by late Friday, pushing into the first half of your Saturday. More details on that coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. All right, Cameron, thanks. A seat left open on the Pike County Fiscal Court has now been filled. WIMT's Buddy Forbes has more from the county's judge executive. Last week, the Pike County Fiscal Court accepted the resignation of District 3 Commissioner Orville Blackburn. Commissioner Blackburn served a little over a year, uh, did a great job, worked hard, uh, but he had some issues that came up and uh, felt it was in his best interest to resign. Wednesday, the seat he left open was filled with an interim county commissioner. Governor Andy Bashir signed an executive order naming Pike County Minister Jim Abshire as District 3's temporary commissioner. Jim is a retired coal miner. Uh, Church of Christ minister and served for a long time as a chief bailiff uh, in the Pike County uh, Courthouse. Well known uh, gentleman and uh, will be a good addition. Judge Executive Ray Jones says the permanent replacement will be voted on in a special election in November with the candidates decided by Pike County's Democrat and Republican executive committees. Uh, that appointment will last until after the November election. The winner of that election, a special election uh, on election day, would then, as soon as the election was certified, would assume the office. Jones says he is glad to see the quick turnaround for finding a replacement, hoping to show the people in District 3 and the rest of the county they are not going unrepresented. It's a large district. It's, it's a third of the county. Uh, it may be the largest geographical uh, district of the three commissioner districts. So uh, Governor Bashir's office did not want to leave that uh, district unrepresented. Filling a seat to keep fulfilling the needs in the area. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Whoever is voted in during the November election will remain the commissioner until the end of the term in 2027. After the current commissioner served, the county will return to its original magistrate form of government with six magistrates. In 2019, former Governor Matt Bevan issued more than 600 pardons and commutations during his final weeks in office. State lawmakers called for state and federal investigations. That was even backed by Republican Senator Mitch McConnell, who called the actions completely inappropriate. Now Kentucky lawmakers want to use the past as a learning experience. Senator Chris McDaniel introduced Senate Bill 126. He says he wants more accountability for governors facing elections. I think that it is imperative to the foundational issues of justice in the Commonwealth that one individual not be able to short circuit the entirety of a justice system from the front line police officer who makes an arrest to the Supreme Court of the land who in the, a sentence of the condemned to death is the final adjudicator. The bill proposes a constitutional amendment putting the decision in the hands of the voters. Want to go to a developing story we're just getting in out of Harlan County. Officials say they are evacuating an area of about six to ten homes in the Llewellyn community near Everett's. Harlan County Emergency Management Director David McGill confirms that the lake at the Llewellyn Fish and Game Club appears to be leaking. The cause is not known. McGill says they have opened a shelter at the Llewellyn Pentecostal Fellowship Hall. The Red Cross is also helping with this situation. McGill says they do have pumps that they will use to try and lower the water levels, but there is not a timeline uh, for that. Now, we do have a reporter on the way to the scene. Uh, we'll update you as we learn more, and of course, we'll have the latest as we get it on WYMT.com. Frustrations and concerns were voiced today by a group of superintendents in Kentucky. They are worried if teacher raises are not included in the state budget, Kentucky will start losing ground. Sitting right in the capital city, Franklin County schools have felt the impact of the competitive market. And officials with the Estill County school system say they are worried about the effects as well. 
when it comes to the education that they're getting. Uh, I feel like we do a really good job for that, but obviously if you're getting a million or two less dollars a year on a population our size of about 2,050, that's a million or two million dollars less that I have to spend on my students. While many of them say they appreciate some of the efforts in the proposal, they hope to see some changes to increase guaranteed based seek to push funds through to districts to provide the raises their staff needs. The Kentucky Community and Technical College System is celebrating its 25th anniversary as the Commonwealth's largest post-secondary institution with 16 colleges and more than 70 campuses. And officials with the institution say they have an annual enrollment of 101,000 students. Today, WYMT's Olivia Calfee spoke with new KCTCS President Dr. Ryan Quarles to learn how they are helping lead the Commonwealth in more ways than one. A study by market analytics firm Lightcast found that the Kentucky Community and Technical College System added $3.9 billion in annual income to Kentucky's economy in the 2022-2023 fiscal year. KCTCS President Dr. Ryan Corals explains what this means for the Commonwealth. That's about 1.6% of the total economy of Kentucky uh, that lies at the feet of our community and technical colleges. And what does that translate into? Well, it means that Kentuckians that go through our programs are making more money. On average, $10,000 more annually if you uh, acquire a degree, whether it's welding, electrician. And when it comes to those jobs, KCTCS has supported more than 54,000 jobs, which equates to one out of every 49 jobs in the Commonwealth. Coral says that means KCTCS is a huge asset when it comes to recruiting companies. A lot of companies, they, they want to make sure that there's water, there's sewer, but they also need to know that there's workers available. And so if, if we are recruiting a business to say Southeast Kentucky and we can get them on the phone and say, we have a community and technical college system that wants to work with you. Uh, oftentimes that's just one more carrot to get that company to come to Kentucky. Now, as the institution looks ahead and as Coral steps into this new role, he plans to maintain their affordability, access, and promise for growth. Let's future-proof KCTCS by making sure that Kentucky, not California, not New York, but Kentucky is the place where new degrees are starting that align with, say, battery plants, that align with fiber optics, that align with aerospace, uh, that other states come to us to say, how'd you do it here? And KCTCS currently has 16 colleges with more than 70 campuses. In Perry County, Olivia Calfee, WYMT Mountain News. Quarrel says only about 56% of Kentuckians ages 18 to 65 are currently in the workforce. If you'd like more information on the Kentucky Community and Technical College System, you can find this story on our website. Well, we are tracking some dry weather this evening, but rain and snow chances are looming. Your first alert forecast after this break.